Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to do a quick follow-up on the hauls I did recently and there are quite a few plants that just need to be potted up ASAP. So I have them all lying here and I'll link the videos where I got them and where I introduced them initially here, right? Yes, if you're interested in where I got them and so on then just check out these videos. And um, yeah, since there are quite a few plants to go through, let's just get started now. This one is the uh, Miltonia Regnellii. I had this soak in water just because I wasn't 100% sure if these roots are actually alive or not. And as you can see, they greened up really well. I will just top this into a nice setup. And I'm just going to assume that this is very similar to Nelly Eilers and Miltoniopsis, so it's going to go into a mix of moss and bark. And as always, I have my different grades of bark, like different coarseness ready. And uh, this one is probably going to get somewhat finer bark and a lot of moss. And since this is probably also going to stay moist for quite some time, I'm going to put it into a dark pot. Not 100% sure about the growth direction on this. Like, for sure this one is a new growth on this side but also this one seems like it could be a new growth so I'm just probably going to put it somewhat in the center and hope for the best as always so really, as always I'm going to start off with a layer of moss on the bottom just so it can kind of soak up water from the little reservoir that the plant would sit in and then I'm just going to fill it up with kind of medium-ish size bark. I feel like this is not the smartest setup. <laughs> and I'll just alternate between bark and moss and keep the moss nice and fluffy. And then the roots just go in here and then of course as always the top layer is going to be bark. This is a somewhat unruly plant, so this definitely has this climbing habit that is sometimes a little annoying. The Anceps has it as well. This is kind of the one big disadvantage of the Lelia Anceps for me. Just because it's, it's a little difficult to keep in a pot. But yeah, probably can't really see anything I'm doing here, but I just feel like it's nice to see what happens with the plants after the haul. Like, I know Karin uh, from Karin's Orchids, she always does kind of the repot or not after a haul, and I really like watching that. But yeah, so I'm just copying her. <laughs> there, there you go, this is the pot now with the Miltonia, and let's hope it's going to continue growing well. I feel like this plant is going to have a really nice momentum. Because I saw the plants that these divisions were taken from and those are humongous. Looking at the Miltonia Regnellii a month later, I think what really, really just stands out is the flower spike. I did not expect this plant to do anything this year, but there you go. We have a few flowers coming out of one of the pseudobulbs. It seems to be a very vigorous plant. I have quite a few roots coming, very plump, very luscious green, and I cannot wait for the fragrance on these ones. Oof, amazing. So happy with this purchase, and a Curlin Orchidean really is a great place to get plants from, like various genera. Super happy with my haul from them, and I would definitely order from them again. So next up, I'm going to deal with the um, Hitlayer Percivaliana that I got from Asendorf uh, Orchideen Zucht. This one, I had it soak as well to see what roots are alive and I mean, nothing greened up and these all seem really papery so I feel like this is going to have quite a pedicure and for that I just need... <sighs> yeah, and I'm probably just going to cut away basically everything here. Yeah, no. these roots are really like 
nothing. Oh my, oh my. Again, this one seems to have somewhat of a climbing habit. You can see the rhizome started here and it goes kind of up. Let's see how I can handle that. It's a bit unfortunate that this plant is so... You know, you know... So bad on the root front because it was... This has been the most expensive orchid I've ever bought. So for it to be this... Like, yeah unhealthy it's it's really a shame um then again it's a pretty big plant and i think it will be able to bounce back pretty soon i feel like i want to keep on some of these roots just so it's anchored in the pot so yeah let's see keep cutting into it thinking maybe there is going to be some green tissue something alive but so far i haven't really seen anything I also doubt the back will sprout anything, but the front here we have a pseudobulb that's just maturing here, so let's see, maybe it will push out new roots. If you grow the Cattleya persevoliana, just let me know what the rooting habits of this plant are, because some plants produce roots first and then a new growth. Like, the roots come as the growth is maturing, whereas other plants are more like maturing the growth first and then roots come yeah let's see yeah and i think i want to leave some of these on just so it's not completely lost in the pot right so it has something to hold on to in the pot but yeah Maybe like this. This looks really sad. Um, I'll also take off the sheet just to clean it up while we're at it, right? While it's outside of media. I had it soak for a few hours in water um, just to really make sure that every root that might turn green is going to turn green, but obviously nothing. Nothing happened. Really interested to see what this plant is going to do. There are some eyes here, so there are definitely... So it seems like this pseudobulb here produced these two growths. And there are definitely also two eyes that might be able to give us new growths on these. So let's see. Let's see what we can get. Not sure what the potting medium for this one would be, so I'm just going to treat it like any other Cattleya I have. And I think this pot could be nice for it. So right, this is the growth direction. So it's going to go all the way back. And hopefully I can just leave it in here for a few years. I'm going to recycle the moss these plants are in. So which might trigger some people. But look, I'm a student. I like our planet. So I'm just going to reuse these things. Don't judge. I'll just keep it pretty shallow so I can just add the media around here and then we'll see. Of course I need a steak. And just stake it up kind of using the pseudobulbs to keep it upright. That's it's not super secure but we'll see. I guess I could also put it into the kind of sphagnum only please grow roots now setup but it's just a little too much of a faff for me right now where i can really use the whole pot to grow and then we'll see so next plant plant done so this is the calea percivaliana one month after repot as you can see it's pretty shriveled but Look at those roots. This plant really, really wants to establish itself and grow back. And it's putting out a lot of roots to accomplish that. So I'm really, really happy about this. 
So I think this band is definitely going to make it, but man, I wish it just had already a good root system when it arrived. I ended up not getting in touch with them at all about this. And yeah, let's see. It seems to be a very vigorous plant and I'm not going to complain any further because I think it's definitely going to make it. Then, while I've already started snatching up the moss from here, these are plants that I got from Bella Vista. It's, these are import plants and I just decided I'm going to pot them all up now. Um, them all up now. Um, them all up now. Um, some of them are really great on the root front. So this is the Cattleya Vornery Concolor. So this is producing really nice roots. Quite a few of them actually. Then you have this one, this is I think the Varsvitsia too, yes. So um, I got two Varsvitsiais. This one, while it's producing a growth, I hope you can see that well enough here. No roots have started, so I think I'm just going to pot it up and be like, there you go, if you want to survive, you will, if not. Mm. And then we have the Aragoyense here, Aragoyensis, I guess. Yeah, again, there are just some tiny root nubbins starting and it's just gonna be potted up. And then this is kind of this mystery plant. There's also new growth forming. Let's see, maybe this will survive as well. I'll probably just pot it up together with the Araguayensis because they're both tiny plants so they can just share a pot. Gonna get some moss. Sorry for that I keep touching my nose. I'm a bit allergic to uh, sphagnum moss. So um, my nose always starts itching when I work with it. And I will keep these pots also kind of shallow with some moss right around the base of the plant. And then just some more bark. And let's hope this Varsovitsia is going to push through. If not, we have the other plant. That's why I got two. And if it will, then even better. So I'm using the name tag to kind of secure it a little bit. You probably can't see what I'm doing again. Um, yeah, so there you go. Trying to secure it. After new growth coming here, let's hope it will survive. This is our Cattleya Varsovitsii Tipo number two, a month after the repot. And you can see, oof, very, very thirsty, very thirsty, very wobbly in the pot. But the new growth is still coming, it's still working on that. And also the roots are really nicely finding their way into the media to hopefully help the plant plump up very quickly again. It's super, super shriveled, really stressed, but I think it's going to make it. I don't see why this plant would abort roots or the new growth at this point. And yeah. Let's see what the future is gonna bring for this one. Okay, bark. I really like this bark. I feel like it's going to last quite a few years in the pot because it's so sturdy. So then this is the Araguayense. Araguayensis, I'm sorry, I just keep saying it wrong. Put it to the back here. And just... Use the stake again to secure it. And use the name tag to keep it in place. Add a little bit of moss around the base of the plant. And I think that's it. I could pull it a little higher. And add a little more. There you go. All potted up and I like to pot them a little more on the shallow side because that way there's still a lot of humidity around the plant and that just makes it a little easier for them to survive while they're not very well rooted. And this one is again the mystery 
seedling I'm just adding moss as always around the plant and just some media and let's see what happens with this one. This is the Cattleya Araguayensis a month after the repot and you can see it has a little growth here it's the leaf is already opening so this is going to be much smaller than anything this plant has put out recently which I guess is to be expected after the stress of moving to a different hemisphere however like we have roots I think this plant is definitely going to make it and as you can see the tiny mystery plant also has a growth coming I'm really curious to see what this is actually some kind of good layer but let's see so yeah Hopefully this plant is going to be very happy in the future. And now the Varnery Concolor. I'm a big fan of Concolors. Usually I'm not super into pinks, uh, but for these Cattleyas it's really nice. And the Concolor is just kind of an even wash of this really elegant pink color. So, you know. We, we stand, we just stand. Again, nicely staked up. And let's see if there's going to be a new growth. I really like Warren Rees because, again, while well, I've never seen any in bloom in person, I like a more compact Cattleya, so just because I don't have a lot of space. So, you know, having these ones and the Gen Mania is, is really good for a collection that, yeah, is maybe not so blessed when it comes to spatial expansion. <laughs> Looking at the Cattleya Warnery Concolor one month after repot, what we see are really nice roots in the pot just going everywhere and I'm super thrilled to see what this plant has in store now. I think it has a great future ahead. <laughs> so yeah, really glad this plant is growing on. And then last but not least, this is the Lelia Anceps Cerulea and as you can see this is dripping. I soaked it because I really want to pot it up. But I also don't want the spike to suffer too, too much. So I just decided I want to make sure all the roots are nice and pliable. So the transplant shock is going to be much less of an issue. And this again is also a ridiculously climbing plant, uh, which is not ideal. And this was potted in somewhat chunky bark and perlite. Probably everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? Repotting this when it's in spike. And I'm like, I'm sorry. These, this plant just, the media smelled a little off. So I just want to get it out of this rather sooner than later. And as you can see, this plant has been in this pot for a while. And like initially I thought it was really fine, but then I watered it and I got some of this like slightly you know the this moldy somewhat like, like old building basement smell and i'm like mm, this media needs to be changed <laughs> so i'm just trying to be as gentle as possible you know, this piece of bark might just stay on this was on top this was dry all the time this is probably gonna be fine here in the center you can see all the roots and everything coming together i think this is really needs to be changed thoroughly. The root system on this one is just so nice. Oh, such a good root system. And these ones, I'm, I also soaked them so I can hopefully kind of bend them over and also get them into the medium. Just so it has another set of roots that can actually get some water. Many of my Cattleya types are starting to put out aerial roots, which I guess is a good sign. I 
initially I thought that's never gonna happen and it's not gonna be a good idea for them because my ambient humidity is just ridiculously low like during summer when it's like when there's literally a thunderstorm outside I might get like 40% humidity in this house and like when I miss them I might get up to 80 for like 15 minutes <laughs> and then it's dry again but then during winter the humidity levels go to below 20% so I never thought that Cattleyas would be able to sustain their aerial roots here because I'm like dry 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 but I guess so far so good I think the only one who's really not putting out too many aerial roots is the Wakriana. Those roots really are mainly focusing towards, like growing towards the substrate. And I have that in a very chunky bark and I can definitely tell that this needs watering more often than all the other plants. All the other plants are in somewhat finer bark and also a little sphagnum moss and the Wakriana only has sphagnum on the bottom of the pot and I can really see all the roots going towards the sphagnum and so now I kind of when misting the plants I focus on the Wakriana a little more just to make sure it gets the hydration it really wants because I can see the pseudobulbs shriveling up and I really don't want that to happen too too often and yeah then um, the Daoyana is producing also a ton of aerial roots <laughs> So, um, and some of those are actually going towards the little water reservoir that the Warkriana has. So I'm like, no, behave. But yeah. Then I have a Maxima that has just roots growing towards the Tolumnias, where I also focus with the mister because that's how I water the Tolumnia, just by misting them. And yeah, so that's. That's really funny to see how the roots just find their way to hydration and kind of where I focus the water. And yeah, it's really nice. I just try to keep them from growing into each other's pots because I feel like once I move, which you know might happen I don't know, not too too soon, but like within the next, like it's not five years or so away, let's just put it that way. Um, it's, this is not my permanent flat. I'm not gonna stay here until the end of my life. So I don't want them to kind of root into each other's pot and then I have to disturb them so much. On the other hand, it's also kind of nice to see them just do their own thing and kind of behave how they would maybe in the wild. Okay, and now the difficult part. These roots were already damaged in transport, right? Aerial roots are really hard to keep alive. Um, but I've soaked them for many hours, overnight actually. And now I'm hoping they're pliable enough to actually go into the pot, at least partially. And if you can hear a weird noise, that's actually my toes rubbing against each other because I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Probably everyone watching this is like, dude, WTF are you doing? This plant is in spike, you're ruining the root system. Like, look, if you want to survive, you're gonna push through. This is kind of the rule in my house. If, if you want to live, you're going to live, right? This is... Growing in my house is like doing a PhD. If you push hard enough, you can thrive if you... If you're a whiny little bitch, then sorry, it's not gonna be for you. Academia rocks. So for this Lelia Anceps, I'm choosing very chunky bark. I still gave it a little layer of moss on the bottom of the pot as kind of the source of humidity when it's not watering day because I typically only water, I don't know, like once a week or so and this plant probably would want to be repotted again next year but since this bark is so good quality i can probably just pull it out of the pot and just plop it into a new one 
Um, I'm waiting definitely for this one to establish in this fresh medium. But I think it's gonna be fine, seriously. Like the um, ANSEPs, yeah, I don't have a lot of experience with them, right? I've only had um, two plants so far and only also for like a few months. But like they were import plants and their roots were still okay. So they seem to be very, very tolerant, right? If, if you can survive traveling for weeks from South Africa without any media to Europe and still have live roots, you're a trooper. And I really like that in them. And so hopefully this one is going to continue. So just don't abort this spike. I would really like to see the flowers. And yeah, there you go. This is a messy table and quite a few plants that have been rehomed. I'm really excited to see how they do. So filming an update a month later, we have some more roots growing on this one and the spike still there and it's been growing and growing and growing so this is really nice i just hope these flowers are gonna open at some point it's a bit of an unruly grower which i love this plant has a lot of character and the great thing is this isn't the only Lelia ansets that's actually spiking because the one that I got from Afri Orchids that had a new growth coming is now spiking too as you can see. Really really exciting, really really exciting and also the second Lelia ansets that I got from Afri Orchids started to put out a new growth and it's been working on this for a while now but if I feel here I don't know if I can really show this well but there's a bump here in this growth and this is what I noticed with this other Lelia ansets as well so I think once this leaf opens I'm going to see a flower spike in here as well and this would be the first time this plant blooms which I'm so thrilled about. I did not expect any of the import plants to do anything for the next two years so now to have the Lelia Anseps all kind of put out a spike even if they're not going to bloom in the end is it's just so cool and <laughs> also while we're talking about blooms, the Saracenia also decided to bloom against my prediction earlier, actually. This plant put out a little flower. Very, very cute. Okay, so there you go. These are the plants now in their new home, hoping they will grow up and be gorgeous. Also hope this one is not going to abort its spike. It might, if it will, I'm like, okay, whatever. I really wanted to get it out of the media just because it smelled a little off and the bark also started to become a little crumbly. So uh, I definitely feel much better about it being in this clean, fresh setup. With that said, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for you know, commenting and so on. I really appreciate the comments and I read each and every one of them. I respond to all of them. Lately, I haven't responded super quickly to the comments. It's just because there's a lot I have to do in my day job. And yeah, you know, you know, you know, academia rocks. Yeah, with all of that out of the way, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.